Disaster management, you can say, involves policy, administrative, and operational activities, policy formulation, administrative decisions, and operational activities at various stages of a disaster. And all these are very important. And managing that is disaster management. It may include non-structural and structural measures. There is something which is a pre-disaster phase, an impact phase and a post-disaster phase for disaster management cycle. So the pre-disaster risk reduction phase has prevention, mitigation and preparedness. Whereas the post-disaster recovery phase has response, recovery and reconstruction. Reconstruction is given as development in that figure. The Disaster Management Act 2005 passed by the Indian Parliament defines disaster management as a continuous and integrated process of planning, organizing, coordinating and implementing measures which are necessary or expedient for prevention, mitigation and capacity building added to that. Prompt response assessing the severity, evacuation and rehabilitation also and reconstruction. UNISDR or United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction has been mandated by the UN General Assembly. The International Strategy for Disaster Reduction built upon many concepts or many formulations which were actually floated during the decade for natural disasters that is in the 90s 1990 to 1999 it embodies many principles in various documents like uh, the 1994 Yokohama strategy for safer world as seen earlier there has been a paradigm shift from a relief-centric approach to disaster reduction and for that the most landmark intervention has been the Hyogo framework of action which involves the strategy of mainstreaming disaster risk reduction into socio-economic and development planning
Disaster risk management involves risk identification, risk reduction, and risk transfer. It is always argued that the phase or the time just after a disaster is very appropriate for carrying out mitigation activities. Why is it so? But even if it is true, there are certain drawbacks as well. What are they? We will just see that. Just have a look at this figure. It shows community cohesion or community support, public support and cooperation during pre-disaster, impact and post-disaster phases. You can see there that it's actually after a disaster that there is maximum community cohesion or maximum cooperation between the people. After that, there is a huge dip in it causing disillusionment and it takes a long time for the recovery to actually happen. The reasons are very simple because public support is maximum during that period, community is actively involved in reconstruction and international and national local aid and help are also available. However, the disadvantages are that, that it might be fairly concentrated on the type of hazard which is already struck. So many others might get neglected, many other possible hazards of future disasters may get neglected. Also the focus of the work may be concentrated on the area of impact, immediate impact. But there can be many other areas, maybe near or a little bit far away which are susceptible to a future impact by the same type or a different hazard. While disaster management and response coordination requires centralized command, it is a need to decentralize disaster risk reduction. Disaster risk management at local level is a key element of any viable national disaster risk reduction strategy and must be built on community networks, effective municipal and local government institutions. And in that, education and training and professional competence and political will are necessary aspects of institutionalizing disaster risk reduction and mitigation. And overall, information is a critical element in planning for disaster mitigation. And for that, we have things like early warning systems. The objective of any warning system is to inform maximum number of vulnerable people about imminent threat of the impending natural hazard. Uh, an early warning system comprises of actually four elements. One is detection, monitoring, dissemination, and response capacity. Normally, according to economies of scale, sustainability, and effective management, multi-hazard early warning systems are better solutions because they'll be activated more often than any single hazard warning system. And when we talk about the warning information which has been given or communicated, to the vulnerable population, it has to be user-friendly and the people should have the capacity to interpret it properly. Capacity building at community level is thus very important. So we must also make sure that members have adequately been trained for that. For dissemination of information, mobile phone technology at local level addressing specific mobile phone towers, which can be easily done 
or through TV channels locally through their digital set-up boxes and local cable operators and radio can give greater penetration within short time. Uh, and the cost might also be very little for this type of information dissemination. But what is essential for this operational network or framework is the command of authority, cooperation, authenticity and trust. Because you must win the trust of the people so that they believe whatever warning is given is actually useful. next one or another type geographic information system it's a computer based tool for mapping and analyzing things that happen on earth uh, using techniques of database operations such as query statistical analysis etc visualization geographical information all disasters are spatial in nature so spatial relationship with many other number of factors like the effect of what kind of disaster it's causing all that are related a disaster management cycle has been already been seen here the gis is useful in almost every stage have a look at this there is also global positioning system which is gps it's a satellite based navigation system that can be used to locate position. Components are of course a space segment that is GPS satellite, a control system operated by the authorities, then the user segment which include both military and civilian use and the GPS equipment. Normally uh, for user segments, that is for uh, civilian users for navigation, surveying, mapping and timing etc. But GPS is used to aid damage assessment after a natural disaster. It has other applications as well. Coming to disasters and economic impact. Economic impact of a disaster can be categorized into three types direct cost, indirect cost and secondary effect. Direct cost or you can call it capital cost of assets such as a building, physical infrastructure, raw material which get destroyed or damaged in a disaster. Crop losses are often included in such things at times. Indirect cost is actually the damage to the flow of goods and services and that is lower output from a factory which has been damaged that kind of thing or loss of sales income due to damage infrastructure when it comes to secondary effect it's an overall economic performance that is short term or long term impact of a disaster on overall economic performance is called secondary effects these may include uh, external trade problems, government budget balance, and so on. Is disaster prevention cost effective is a good question. Yes, because it not only saves cash or money, it also helps save a lot of lives. And human resources are the most important resource. And it also protects other natural resources ensuring economic stability then protect livelihood investments are also protected including foreign investments the natural environment culture of a community and providing stability for national economy is also one of the most important things mm -hmm.